So we're going to go over rational exponents. And we have a formula here that you guys are going to need to remember. Okay? So a base to a power that is a fraction. How can we write this so that we can possibly evaluate these numbers? Okay? So I'm going to break this into two parts. We have the option of when x is to the power of m. Okay? And we know that that is just a base to a power. Or the other half of this is when x is to the power of 1 over n. Now, 1 over n can be rewritten as the nth root of x, which is kind of confusing. But we're going to evaluate it and we're going to work through this. So if we have two values, okay, m being the power of the function and n being the root of the function, we can rewrite it as the base to that power and then we find the root of that, depending on what that number is. Or we can do the other order, where we find the root of that base first, and then we put it to that power. Both of them will give us the same value. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite these and then evaluate them. Okay? So, I can choose to rewrite this as, and if you guys notice, we'll put these in different colors here. Well, M, N will be blue and M will be green. So, the blue part of this fraction will be the 2, and the green part will be the 3. In other words, this will be the power, and this will be our root, okay? And that 9 is our x, in other words, our base, okay? So here's our base to this function. So we're going to put this to the second root. That's what it means. And we know that the second root is the square root. That's what we're used to seeing. So the second root on your calculator actually won't even have a 2 there. Okay, it'll just be a root function. So we have our square root function, and we have our power of 3. So we're going to do the second version of this first, and then we'll do the first one after. So what we're going to do first here when evaluating is we're going to find the square root of 9. What is the square root of 9? 3, that's right. So then we're then left with 3 to the power of 3. Anyone know what 3 to the power of 3 is? 27, that's right. Good. Okay. Or we could have written this a little differently. We could have written the square root of 9 to the power of 3. Okay. So kind of put a line through here. And in which case we're doing it in an opposite order. We're going to evaluate the power first and then the root. Okay. So the 2 is here. Still there. Okay. And I'll draw it in blue. Okay. There's our 2, there's our 3. So let's evaluate 9 to the power of 3. Take a calculator out here for this. 9 to the power of 3, 729. So now I have the square root of 729. And again, we're going to put that into our calculator. Square root is 27. So it didn't matter which order we did the two in, we still evaluate it to the same value. Okay? What will be best is when we take a look at the two of these, it would have been a lot easier to use this version because we found the square root, something we could probably do in our head, and we could kind of do the power of three in our head, where this one was much more difficult. Okay? So we're going to choose which one we think is best. So we'll evaluate the second one here. We have base 16 to the fourth root to the power of 3, or we have the fourth root of 16 to the power of 3. Now, very quickly, at the top of your head, does anyone really know how to do 16 to the power of 3 off the top of their head? Oh, no, without your calculator. Uh, is it about 120,000? No. It's very difficult, okay? This one here, the fourth root of 16, though it seems hard, it might be a very simple number. We know it's got to be smaller than 16. So what number oh, I wrote it. times itself four times equals 16? Should be 2. Okay. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 will give us 16. So the fourth root of 16 is the value of 2. Okay. So we've now got value of 2. And 2 to the power of 3 
we can evaluate 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8. So obviously this version here was simpler for us to do, though both of them can be done, especially if you're using a calculator. Okay? Now, on your calculator, when you're evaluating those roots, the fourth root here, okay? So I'm going to focus on this. <coughs> when writing in the fourth root, you'll have something on your calculator that'll look like either this or please put the inverse. Oh, no, they don't have this. You have two buttons on your calculator. One of them may look like this, which will be y to the power of x. That's one of the buttons you may have to push. Or you'll have something that says x to the power of I think it's 1 over y. Something similar to that. So those are one of the two values you'll have to push when evaluating these radicals. Okay, we're going to go through a second example here. In these examples, we're going to actually solve for the base. So we don't know what this x value is. So, just like when we were doing our algebra before, we want to isolate this variable. Okay? Now, this is strictly a power. Okay? And if I made it a fraction, how can I make this value a fraction? Put it over what? One. One, that's right. Okay? So the easiest way to think about this is when we need to move a power to the other side when it's a fraction, we need to invert the fraction. Okay? So right now, this fraction, I'm going to just focus on it up here. The fraction is 3 over 1. So when we move it to the other side of the equal sign, when we invert it, what will it become? It won't be negative. We're not thinking a negative reciprocal. It's just going to become 1 over 3. So when we move that over, we're going to get x is equal to 20, sorry, negative 27 to the power of 1 over 3. Now we're used to dealing with this. The x is by itself, so we can solve for x in this question. And then we're going to rewrite it as a rational expression. The root is the value on the bottom, and the number on top is a power. When we have a power of 1, is that going to change anything? No. So that part isn't the most important. But the root is important. We're going to be looking at the third root. Okay. So when we rewrite this, we're going to have the third root of negative 27 is equal to x. Okay. And let's try it in our calculator here. We have 27 when it's a negative, and we're going to be looking, here's my value. I push this button. I might be doing this in the wrong order. Oh, no, that's the right order for my calculator. Remember, like I told you, each calculator is very different. So our value here is negative 3. X is negative 3 in this version. Okay, so let's try another example. In this example here, we have 3 over 2. We need to isolate for x. So when we move that exponent to the other side, we need to invert that fraction, right? So when it goes to the other side, we're going to have x is equal to 27. What will the fraction be? That's right, 2 over 3. And again, we're going to write this as a rational expression or a radical. The 3 is going to be our root, so we have the third root of 27 to the power of 2. And I can choose to do the power of 2 before I root it or after. Whoops, not 3, 2. I'm going to do it after. Does anyone know what the third root of 27 is? We just literally did it over here. It's just going to be 3. Now, it was a negative in the other one because it was negative 27. In this version, we have positive 27. So it's going to be a positive value. So we have 3 still to the power of 2. What is 3 to the power of 2? So our base in the second version was a value of 9. Okay. Oh, and let's uh, pin that page. There we go. So there's everything we've gone over in this period. 